Two weeks is a bloody long time in footy, that is for sure, and for our fantasy teams. And it was definitely like that for me a few weeks ago. It wasn't in a good way with my squad and you know making a couple of bad decisions and that's completely turned around and that's what can happen with you guys whether you're in a pretty good position already and you want to push higher or you're in a bit of a tough spot 10 to 30 40,000 there in the rankings two weeks really turns it around you make some good trades in that and obviously in this scenario right now we can use three and four a week it's super easy to uh to push up a lot of rankings at a time if you can make two to three four five good trades in a row uh, it can happen right we've we've obviously seen all of us make poor trades at certain times and that sets us back and how quickly it set me back in a few weeks but then it's easy enough to to get it back the other way and when i say easy enough it just means that you if you make the right call the right captain you can shoot up thousands of rankings in one hit is what I mean by the easy side. Making the correct decision is the hard part as always. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to speak about that from a fantasy perspective and then get into obviously, uh, yeah, uh, my, my thoughts on, you know, two weeks being a long time in the footy perspective. And that's the the big one. Obviously the game that just finished up, um, the Sharkies 40 to nil over the Raiders. And, you know, you're in a situation, Raiders, where they're having a really, really good start to the season and and Fogs goes down and, and all, everything goes downhill from there. They, they played a poor half before he got injured and then he gets injured. And, and just coming into this one, you knew it was going to be a perfect storm given the, the Sharkies were in good form. And with Fogarty out of the ranks there, it's it's tough to, it's really tough to come back from that. And, you know, you've got two young guys steering you around. Danny Levi is your nine and uh, Chevy Stewart is your one, an 18-year-old. It was never going to go down, going to go down well at all, no matter how much effort they put in. And, and they tried, they just didn't have it. Uh, the Sharkies were just too dominant and that's where that two weeks just comes in for them. It's, it's, yeah, it's a tough little situation for them. Similar to that with the night, the Knights, but they actually were able to bounce back against a, a Dolphins team that are in form, missing a few troops, obviously, but they're in form at the moment and, and had a good win last week there uh, against the Eels. And for the Knights, it was a big turnaround as well. And we'll speak about them uh, in a little bit later there, but you know, two weeks there with Ponga getting some injuries for them to come back and get a win was massive on that front there. We've obviously seen uh, a few of these other teams in the Dragons. You know, they come out and they show that they're you know, a really good, really good outfit. And then the next week they come out and get get sixty put on them. So a really ridiculous kind of situation there for sure. Uh, we'll talk about the Warriors in a second there. So the second part, guys, the, the games they've really opened up. So it's points galore at the moment. So that's the next thing I've learned here in round eight. I did hope you, I hope you guys enjoyed the weekend of footy. It was pretty pretty entertaining, obviously, with the amount of points scored, the amount of tries there, and the games on Thursday. There was fifty one in the first game, seventy eight the second, seventy four the third, fifty in the fourth there, forty four in the fifth, forty six. So that was the uh, you know those two games there in a row were some of the lowest of the weekend, and then you've got you know Knights eighteen to fourteen victors over the Dolphins, so our lowest score there of the week in thirty two is pretty wild and then sharky's 40 to nil over the raiders so a very high scoring one there but obviously more one-sided compared to the others where most teams are sort of letting in two to three tries there for the most part on that front so just keep that in mind when you're looking at your fantasy and super coach decisions is you know points are, are now free flowing a little bit more you can be on the wrong side of it and not get any attack and and really you know hurt your scores according to that just because of the fact that if you're not getting the ball there's less time in play and your base stats go down if you're the ones involved in all of the tries as you saw with sam walker's you know 170 odd in super coach you know 90 odd in in fantasy similar to that with Hines, just just there this evening with the uh the types of scores that you can get if you're an attacking player in you know if you're a prominent attacking player in a decent team it looks like it's starting to open up. And as we we do see across the season that scores do differentiate and they do change uh, along, along as further as the year goes, uh, across the season, I should say, that uh, it, it starts to spread a little bit more to halves, a little bit more into the outside backs. At the beginning of the season, it's a little bit more skewed to hookers, to mids, and a little bit to the edges. But obviously, you know, in this scenario, if edges can score tries, they can and, and get tackle breaks and the like, they can be involved in a lot of that scoring. So just keep that in mind when you're uh, when you are looking at your fantasy and super coach trades here. The next thing I wanted to talk about was the WAS and the change in them over the last few weeks. And we've been speaking on this channel a lot around the the, the defense and the effort that a lot of teams are putting in. And you've seen that change for the better for the Titan side, right? So that's another one for the two week 
change and what can happen in two weeks is the Titans can start to play better footy and have a, a couple of close games and then finally get a win away as well at Mount Smart. So it's a massive win, massive turnaround for the Titans and their defensive grit. It's it's improved greatly. They've always had the ability to score tries, but they haven't been able to keep teams under sort of you know five or six tries more, right? And that's you know wasn't the case against Manly, 34 points put on them. But Warriors here, they're able to outscore them just enough to get the job done and, and congrats to them for getting their first win. Hopefully they continue with that defensive, you know, a little bit more grit than what they have been showing. It's not great by any stretch, but it at least keeps them in games, right? If you're just letting in tries simply, everyone's heads drop and that's what's changed with the Titans. And from the Warriors side, that defensive intensity and that direction has actually been lost on them. So they've been able to get up for games to start for the first 10 minutes, 15 minutes. They're getting up to getting out to two try leads and and then they're absolutely falling away. And it's it's not good enough at the moment. And they do need to sort that out because it's something that um, has plagued them over the last few weeks. And they're letting too many points in to, you know, yeah, <laughs> funny that, that a couple of games ago, three games ago, it was Manly that you know got out to that early lead on the Warriors, and then the last, and then they were able to claw it back. But still, it's a lot of points they're letting in, right? In these last two weeks, it's been the the points on the back end. So they've started really well, and then let them in from there. So we need to get them back to the start of the season where they are able to keep defense, keep their defense really strong, formidable, and keep teams to low points. And if they can turn that around, I do think that the the direction in attack will start to come as well because they were also trying to get used to Tamari Martin as well, where they had Luke Metcalf for the first month. So I think they're really missing him, to be honest with you. They, they play great with, with Luke there. He was able to get early ball to guys like Roger and the like, and Tamari's actually running it himself a lot more than probably what I expected, to be fair. I thought that he was, you know, last year, able to, to get it out to his outside backs even more. And, and this year he's got Roger next to him, and he's actually using him less than, than when he had Adam Pompey or... Yeah, and Marcelo, Marcelo Montoya next to him on that left hand side. So that's an interesting one there. And as I said, if it's if the defense and and the the effort, the intensity can can be upped and improved, you'll see the the spoils on the other end from the Waz. Like they're able to still get good tries and they're able to good, look good in patches, but these last few weeks they haven't done it anywhere near a full eighty minutes. It's been about sort of thirty. 30 to 40 minutes they've been able to do that. And that's not good enough against even the, the worst teams in this competition. That's not good enough. And Wade Egan had one of his worst games. Uh, definitely, I think, his worst game of the year in that game that just happened on uh, on Thursday afternoon. That's a while ago now, Thursday at 2 p.m. Uh, but it's been a wild four or five days for those that have had a, a bit of a party time. Not myself. It's um, just a long time. There's a lot going on. You, know, you do a lot over a, a weekend, especially if you took someone who took the Friday off as well. Um, yeah, plenty of day weekend, that's for sure. And I hope you're all feeling good and ready to get into your Monday. Uh, but lockout will come for both Fantasy and Supercoach, and that'll be cool on that front there. So Waz need to sort that out, turn it around, and get back in the winner's circle because they, um, they're starting to to fall away a little bit, unfortunately. For number four, guys, our game, it's in good hands. Like we, we got, We've got to talk about these young fullbacks and halves and... And really, obviously, uh, can we can we say AJ Brimson, a young half, a young strapping young uh, young fullback, I should say? Um, yeah, just like you got Sam Walker just out there absolutely dominating in that one for the Roosters. You got Jai Gray for the Bunnies that shows that he has all class and, and he's going to be a, a great young fullback in our game. That is for sure. For the Eels, you see Sanders. He's going to be a great half in this in this league. That was great. David Armstrong on the weekend. Uh, sorry, on the weekend a couple of hours ago. He was awesome in a in a winning side. Like he, he was stoked by that. He got he got the first try and and everything involved in that was um he was awesome. Very electric. Kept his kept his speed. Kept his effort for the entirety of the game and, and helped them win. That was amazing. That was incredible work from him. Um yeah, we saw obviously the young Chester in, in the centers there did really good things until his injury. Lockie Galvin looked incredible again on the weekend, and then you've got guys like Chevy Stewart uh, who came out and and really did you know. Tried his best, did good things uh, for the most part. Obviously, yeah, a couple of try savers. So defensively, was able to do good work on that front. And, and you know, Daniel Atkinson was very, very good as well. Um, he yeah, was able to just do his job, basically, in a, in a team that's that's looking good. But, you know, he came out and showed that he's uh, he's definitely up to NRL standard. He, you know, held his own in defense and uh, had no problems on that front. So very, very excited for, for where the league is at and, and where, it's, uh, where it can go from here. And I just want to talk about the, the Cowboys and the Knights, the changes on a week-to-week basis. And we'll start with the Cowboys. And 
We've been speaking about their defense and it hasn't been good enough. And and for about 65 minutes, I'd say, of this game and, and really some key moments that cooked them, the drink water pass on half time would have you know, just really demoralized them after a pretty good half. And, and the early penalty from, from Cotter, I will have to call him out as much as, I lo- as much as I love him. That early penalty, just gifting Panthers possession in their in their 20, in their 30, and they were able to get an early try, right? So that those two plays there, were, were really important. And I think that without those, that there's a high chance that they could win this game, right? And to think that there were any chance of, of winning a game against the Panthers, yes, it was at home, so that's obviously going to be part of it. Uh, they, they do play a lot better at you know Country Bank, Queensland Country Bank Stadium. But to go anywhere near Panthers with Cleary back and everyone but Sorensen there available, it, um, it was a really, really tremendous effort from that front. And, and I'm very proud of, of their change because it's not something we've seen all year. You know, any there was zero chance that they're going to display this defense at the start of the season. So that's what we need from the the Cowboys going forward is to continue to display that defensive intensity. And the Panthers were worried. Like Cleary spoke about, he said they are relentless. You know, when they get the ball in hand, we know what they can do. And they were absolutely gassing the the Panthers. And and Cleary said that as well. It was just those couple of moments that Panthers are you know, able to capitalize on, and that's the team that they are, and that's why they are the three-time in a row premiers and will continue to, to win games like this, just like the Storm, because they can capitalize on the errors that these teams make. And if they make an error themselves, they're able to defend it really well. So Cowboys got plenty of momentum up, which was great, and helped them out. For the Knights, again, it's that change in defensive intensity. It's this game of football. It's not difficult. You know, Armstrong brought a little bit of a little bit of fire to this this team, which was awesome. You've got you know Dan Gagai returning as well. The two of them, I spoke about him in a fantasy perspective, uh, you know, d- during this week, and and with him getting the goal kicking as well, I was like, Gag- Gagai is the one you want in in the centres. It's a little bit expensive. It's a it's a big call to do it at his price, a six eighty odd, or you know, if you're going higher than that in uh, in Supercoach as well, for sure. But um. But yeah, this 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 team there with the with the injection of those two, obviously Ponga being out, uh, Armstrong was able to fill a vo- that void in some way, obviously. And then you know the halves are able to direct him around the park. Brayley looks really good and helpful at the nine position as well. So the introduction introduction of Brayley into an eighty minute role to go along with Dan Gagai and Armstrong was great for that injection of um, a little bit of defensive grit, obviously on. You know, Gagai and uh, and Braley's side, but direction as well around the park through Braley. And it looks like the defense has, has picked up a little bit. Again, it is a Dolphins team that, you know, maybe have got up really high for that last game when they had, a, 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 you know, they've got a lot of guys out and that kind of came back to earth in this one and, and Knights really shut up to play. So it could be a mixture of that, but it's great to see their turn around after losing Ponga to then come out and put on this display. So I was very impressed by that. And uh, obviously Cowboys couldn't get the win, but it's a big improvement on their front. We'll get into looking at the ladder next week there. Guys, so the fancy tip of the week. Last week we spoke about only trading again for injuries. Guys, you were going to be trading out the next week or two anyway. They're the kind of the options with this season being pretty cooked for injuries in that front. The trades are worth more than the luxury of upgrading for sure. So you're not going to see now... Um, yeah, I, I said I was talking to myself there, but it's going to cook us very soon. And it's all well and good to just keep maxing, keep maxing, but it's going to cook you through the buys and later on in the season. So this week's tip, the upside players are everything. And I spoke about that in a previous one, but just wanted to reiterate that there. So Nico Hines obviously going for 115 or 110 or whatever he's going to end up on, right? It was absolutely massive. And you, you needed him in your side to have a big week this week, right? So that was that's a no-brainer on that front. There's other players though, that have that tremendous upside and that you know obviously going Trey Fuller this week he had you know a, a big chunk of upside there I'm going to check out his updated score let's see if it's updated while we're on here hopefully it has and hopefully it's still pretty solid if not you get to see my blow up what's he got 67 that's not too bad what Plath get up to 57 cool they did add his tackle break so what I will say actually for the most part the um, the updates that Van Hub are doing post game have been very good. Oh, they took away one tackle break from Fuller from 69 down to 67, but he was incredible. Like he's an upside player and he should be in this league. Incredible. You and Aiken 69, that's tough. That is tough not being an owner. I should have got him four weeks ago. Anyway, anyway, probably should have, what, what could I have gone there? Smithies, Smithies to Aiken. That'll worked out as well. We still don't see anything from Connolly Lemuelu, but um, 
yeah, anyway, I just thought that'd be something to note. How's my boy Kai Biz Paul? He's stuck on 30. Yeah, so they're the updates to that first game that's just popped through. Armstrong ends up at 51. Dane Gagai at 66. That's massive from Dane. Um, it's what you expect as well with the try, but everything was back to, to good stuff with him. 24 tackles for one miss. 100 run meters, so he could even get more at certain times. Greg Marzu getting 18. He's going to be so cheap in weeks to come. Jaden Braley, 55. So good stuff on their front. We'll get into that obviously a little bit deeper tomorrow. That's for sure. But I just wanted to check that because I thought there might have been a, a bit of a change in some scoring. And I do think that um, unless they added the error in already, but uh, they've kept Hines' offload on from that one which he almost scored he's over the line then he came down he tried to offload it they gave it a knock on but in the fancy stats they didn't give the knock on in that and they they gave him the, the offload at that point and haven't taken it away so they gave him the offload before um they took it off kind of thing and they haven't taken it off um so in real life and they haven't taken it off in fancy for example so that's um you should see a little bit of a drop on Hines, I think, but we'll see what happens um, if they've missed. Yeah, you know, there's so much going in that game. If they've missed kick meters, I think they, you know, I felt like they missed a little bit of the kicking at the start. Um, they may have missed meters gained. We don't know, right? But anyway, we'll get to that in tomorrow's video. But uh, yeah, so we're seeing some examples, as I said, over the past few weeks of, of free-flowing footy that upside players are absolutely everything and they're going to help you. If they like have a pretty solid base but have you know a very high upside, then that's what you want. At this point, from that, upside play is great, but making the correct bot moves for the buy period is everything, obviously. So even if these guys don't play round 13, right? You only need the 13 guys. If you have 12, that's fine too. Available players, hopefully they're all decent. But even if they don't play round 13, they can be perfect for your preparation. You look at someone like Bateman, he misses 13, but he, ha he plays all the rest of the buy games. The guys that are like Garrick, he misses 13 as well, right? But he, he misses 17 also, but he plays round 14, 16, 19, and 20. So that's massive, right? So these kind of things you need to look at, um, not just for one week, and you need to have a, a very good squad for the entirety of the period, not just looking for round 13 and then making a bunch of trades again. If you can have a very balanced side, then you won't have to make multiple changes on a week-to-week -week basis with your guys. So there you go. That's my thoughts this week. That's the fantasy tip of the week. And that is the update. We'll get into the uh, yeah, the two fantasy and, the, and a couple of super coach updates in the uh, yeah, tomorrow morning's video. I can't wait for that. But in, until then, hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you enjoyed these games of footy. And up, Nico Hines.